All right. So, hello everyone. Welcome, Welcome back to the Welcome. channel. Today, um, we have Kobe, Evans, Paul, and myself, and we are going to talk about how to dig yourself out of a creative rut. We all get there sometimes. Some people stay there a lot longer than others. But yeah. we're going to talk about strategies on how to do that. And uh, before we get started, uh, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. Paul, Kobe, cool. and then Evans. That cool. Go ahead. Thanks, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Open Shutter. I think it's going to be a an, an interesting conversation. If you guys don't know who I am, my name's Paul. I run a photography meetup group in Toronto called Get Out Shoot. Visit us at getoutshoot.com. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to all of our channels. My channel is about uh, the vlogs of, of the meetups and other random things that I think about. And I just uh, passed 150 YouTube videos, so I know a couple things about cre cre creative ruts. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks everyone, and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kobe, and I think this I'm I'm a regular now on Open Yeah, Shutter. you're hired. Yeah, you just sent you, you the papers. Uh, uh, creative growth is something that uh, it's big time. It's something that I'm actually even going through a little bit. Um, in a way, I get out of it and get back into it. So I think this this is going to be a good discussion today. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Evans, um, and this topic today is it's perfect timing because um, I personally have been going through a rough time the last couple of months when it comes to creating content and, and getting stuff done. Um, I probably was off on a sabbatical leave from my, my YouTube channel for about a month where <laughs> I haven't really posted anything. Um, today was probably the first time I posted in a month. Right. So it's it's a yeah. good time to go through this. And, and I think it's going to benefit a lot of us as, as we go through this today. 100%. OK. Ice cream. So uh, hello, Brian. <laughs> oh, oh, is Brian. Brian oh, is he is he trolling us? Hold on. Uh, <laughs> not 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 Mr. Brian James. This oh, is where am I going? Oh, Brian oh, on. OK, uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to throw out the link there so that if Brian wants to join oh Brian us, wants to come on yeah yeah I'm yep. gonna throw out the link and then he'll he'll come on no he's coming on he's not trolling he's coming yeah so uh, let's just what is your definition of a creative rut um, who 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 That's a great to question. The definition of a creative rut, I think it's the inability to actually make something. You can have it in your mind, like a vision, but I, like for you to actually start to make it and you can't do it, I think that's what the rut is. Because you always have ideas, right? Like there's always something going on in your head. It's just a matter of, do you actually want to make it? You know? So in that case, what, what would you say, what would be the difference between um, a creative rut and procrastination because sometimes you have the idea in your mind you want to yeah. do it but you procrastinate right would we consider yeah. that to be part of creative mm. rot or as a symptom of creative rot right? could be because sometimes could be. you have the idea in your head but to sit down and film it yeah say, oh i'll do it tomorrow or maybe i'll do it in the, in the night and you never yeah. get it done right? well i don't know what? i think yeah go go ahead <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a symptom of it, to be honest. Um, it's, it's It goes both ways. It could be a symptom of it, or it could be a, an attitude of yours or a character you are developing <laughs> in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, creative, I think creative growth is a bit extreme compared to procrastination in the sense that with creative growth, you don't feel like creating, yeah. it's the feeling. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like creating. You don't feel like going back to whatever you used to do. You yeah. just don't feel like motivated. doing. Yeah. What and you why is that? Because do. you don't think it's good. You don't think the idea is good, right? Well, sometimes, yeah. You don't feel the idea is good, or you feel well. It's not innovative enough. I think. I yeah. think that's the cure. It's not. You feel you are not creating anything new. You're yeah. creating the same old stuff. Yeah. And it's 
Yeah, it's true though. But I mean, I've like, I mean, like, I've like, everything is done though. Like, it's like everything has been done. You just need to do it in your way, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you just need to, you just need to do it in your way, and that's just like, I don't know. Like to me, it's like I just mentioned in my other video when I did 150. It's like all the videos I've done are for me, really. Like they're for me. They're not really for anybody else. First, right? They're for me, and if people like them, great. If they don't, fine, because you can't control what people think, right? So you really yeah. need to make it for yourself first. And I think that's one way to get yourself out of a rut is just to is just to just to keep making it for you. Like what what do you want to make versus what do you want to make for your audience? Now, if you get to like a bigger status, it might become like a different story. But when you're first starting out, I think it's super important to start making stuff for you because then you get into like a rhythm of just making and making and making. And over time you'll you'll like you'll just get better, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, hmm. for, for me, right, especially the last couple of months, my problem has not just been that um, I'm feeling lazy or procrastinating per se, but it's it's been this kind of feeling that um, I have I have content. I, I always plan my contents ahead of time. So I have contents that I have planned, that I've written scripts for and stuff. Yeah. But sometimes after when I sit down to record, I feel like, there's already so many people talking about this, so why am I doing another video yeah. on the same all topic? Done. Like the new <laughs> Sony, it's all been done. <laughs> it's all been, been done. Reviews so... on it. Like, what are you going to do? You got to do yeah, it your way. What am I going to do? You got to do it right. your way, though. That's, that's, that's what makes your channel different, because it's your channel. Yeah. Right? I, think, <laughs> I think that's the difficult part, because until you get to the point where you understand that all has been done, but you have not Hi, done it. Yeah. <laughs> yes see that that's one of the the hardest things it's like especially on youtube uh when there's a hot topic everybody jumps on it and then yes. you might be halfway through yours but you don't have a yeah. team of six seven people who are writing filming yeah. editing, filming, you know, editing, editing yeah post it's just you, exactly. it's, just you so it's just you so by the time you um you get your stuff together. There's so much of it that's out there already. You you, you feel like, oh, should I even continue making yeah. this? Or that's the not? first mistake. Typical first example. Mistake. I was preparing a video for the Z6, uh, the the Z6 Mark II and the Z7 Mark II announcement that's supposed to come out on October 14th, right? Yeah. But I had so much else going on. So I had the script. I was preparing the pictures and the clips I wanted to use. And then this morning I woke up and, oh, Z9 has been announced. And mm -hmm. people had already made too many videos on the Z62 and Z6, and now it's not a fresh topic anymore. And mm. all the all the preparation work that I've done is still there, but yeah. I just didn't touch it today. I just didn't feel like touching it, you know. Yeah, and, I, I I have videos uh, filmed on three lenses, all the Tamron lenses. I have I have them filmed to a certain extent, try to edit, but then after a while, I feel like this is old news. It's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but. <laughs> No. Um, but I, I think sometimes too, for my like in in this scenario, I, I become my own worst enemy because I'm my own worst critic, right? Yep. Yep. Um, I get that it sometimes we feel like it, it's been done too many times, but yeah, there is always that specific audience for my kind of stuff, who even though they may have seen other reviewers. Will still be waiting for my my style of review yes. or, or my style yes. of video on that. It's not the product element. they want; it's you they want. Yeah, it's true because mm -hmm. yeah, you take for example Peter McKinnon, right? People will go to him first, even even if have, even if they have to wait a couple of weeks for like the like the review of the new Sony because right, people right, want right, to go right, to him, right? Because right? they just want to see him. It's not really about the product, <laughs> not really. I just want to see him. So that's what that's what you have to do. You have to maximize your strengths. You have to understand what you're good at and maximize that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not easy. Think, like that 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 takes time. A lot of time. I think one of the issues is that uh, for YouTube creators, uh, one of the issues that uh, keeps coming up is the fact that you're not really supposed to be too much involved as a spectator on YouTube. And that's yeah. that's one of the big downsides, because people are on YouTube. They tend to get addicted to watching a lot of YouTube videos and mm -hmm. doing basically their research on YouTube. So mm -hmm. they end up with 
finding that well someone has already done the z6 mark 2 someone has already done the z9 someone has already yeah. done the lenses and stuff like that it yeah. gives you that kind of creative block because you feel what you are doing is not yeah. new and yeah. so when i when i watch some of the interviews with the top you know youtube content creators one thing they say is when they are creating new stuff they tend to stay away from youtube yep because they don't want to be influenced by one what people are creating about the same product and they don't also want to be influenced by the fact that people have created everything and someone has already done what they are planning to do mm -hmm. so until they release their video they are not going to look at anyone else unless maybe it's a collaboration and you say that well um maybe my friend did this review and then i'm going to take bits of it and break it down further or something like that yeah. they tend to stay away especially from reviews product reviews mm -hmm. you have to stay away from the whole cloud and then create yeah. yours put it out there then you yeah. can look at others and then yeah. maybe if you want to do an update or review uh do a version two of your review then that's fine yeah. but you yeah. really have to stay away from it yeah welcome well, brian welcome, hey, brian. welcome brian. Welcome to the show. Last minute. Hello, hello. I, I think I think individuals have individual problems. So for me, I would say one of my best years creating was last year. And mm -hmm. last year was crazy. Uh, so I'm a I'm a chronic procrastinator, okay? <laughs> I, <laughs> I procrastinate like like nobody's business. Yeah. But I always end up getting the job done somehow. Now, this is what happened to me when uh, last year uh, I was full force doing wedding videos and wedding photos. Yeah. At the same time, I, it was my final year for my MBA program. At the same time, I was working as a helicopter mechanic for the army. Right? Now, Crazy, man. I did not have <laughs> any stressful. time to do anything else. I mean, I didn't even watch one movie or anything. So this is how I procrastinate. When I'm editing photos and I wanted to procrastinate, I would switch to videos. Right, and then right. when, I'm, when I'm tired of all that, I'll pick up the textbook. So I was just right. going in a circle. And yeah, that's how my yeah. mind is. I need to be fed with stuff. Right. And I would just keep going and keep going. And I, I was just, I, I don't know. I did like 22 weddings and I was just Jeez. going. Now, this year when a bunch of the, all that stopped, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'll be working on one project, and then I'll be distracted for a second. Oh, let me learn some uh, character animation for a little bit. Oh no, yeah. no, let me let, let me learn some uh, color oh, for a little bit, and I'll be doing random stuff, and that same project is still there. So, <laughs> oh my god! I, I uh, you know, everybody is different. I watched yeah. a, a, a talk on procrastination, and some yeah. people actually learn to procrastinate a little bit because it in, increases their uh, creativity. It's actually yeah. good for you, in a way. A yeah, little bit. A, way. a little bit of it. <laughs> a little not yeah. like. Yeah. So I will bit. link you guys. To the you guys need to see it, man. It's it's so mind. You should link it. You should link it in the comments. Find it. Link it in the comments. Yeah, I'll find it. Yeah. But yeah. So, but somehow I found a, a way to cure mine. In a way, I just find other stuff which are relatively important to be doing at the same time. So I'm I'm switching from project to project instead of project to fun. You know. Mm -hmm. Brian, Brian, any comments with this? Um, I think it's it's something everybody yeah. is going to deal with, no matter what. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I just if I can't think of what I want to shoot, I just find something I haven't shot in a while. Yeah, and I'll just go out and do some bird photography, just yeah. just to do something different, and mix it up. Yeah, yeah. true. And then I'll play with play with the editing, and that usually ignites a bit of spark again. That's a good one. I like that. Hey, Kim. Well, Kim's on. Hi. We got some, oh, we got hey, some, Kim. We got some class on the show finally. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Uh, this is a live much. call in show. We turned this into like a live call in. 1 800. <laughs> it's, it's, a Zoom, it's a Zoom call now. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. That's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's fine. But I think so, uh, I think one thing, yeah, sorry. One thing that uh 
we tend to forget is the fact that creatives we we deal a lot with a lot of adrenaline we, we work with a lot of adrenaline when we are creating yeah. something new you want the adrenaline to keep flowing and then your imagination just spikes high but when you are so calm and collected like in this pandemic uh, era you lie down so much you feel like okay let me create this when you start putting things together the adrenaline just drops and you go like well maybe i should do something new so we've end up finding ourselves learning new things that we will never finish learning yeah <laughs> we start it's true i can tell oh, you yeah. the crazy stuff that i've been i've been learning uh stock trading i've been learning <laughs> <laughs> python programming like a whole lot of things you start and then you just dump it because you just want something that will kick your adrenaline up yeah okay, right. so that you can turn the project but it doesn't happen itself. yeah any comments kim um, have a little uh does your son want to yeah. Someone is taking my time. For those of you who don't know Kim, Kim is yeah. one of our OGs, the very oh, first original, um, original <laughs> members oh. of, of, of the community, right? Yeah. Right from day one, right Kim has always one. been here. Yeah. Yeah. So, also, yeah, if you're in the oh. Toronto area and you want to know something about Bloorville, ask Kim. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> So I was reading something uh, just before this show, maybe five minutes before this show. Yeah. <laughs> I told you guys I was a procrastinator, okay? <laughs> and it, it said, um, you don't, you are not really going through a creative, uh, a writer's block, right? You know how writers just say they're going through a, a writer's block and then they just take a piece of paper and they sit there and it's after one hour, it's still playing, right? Mm -hmm. It says the very first step is just show up. If you yeah. are a writer, just start writing anything at all. You know, if you are a photographer, just you know just show yeah. up. Just grab your camera, start shooting anything at all, and then let everything yeah. just sit in slowly. But you have to show up. Make up your mind. If if yeah. you really yeah. don't want to do it, just make up your mind that hey, I'm going to do it for just ten minutes, and yeah. the probability exactly. that you keep doing it more than 10 minutes it's about 80 percent but you can just tell yourself i'm going to just do this for 10 minutes and that's one way to quickly get out of it so that's actually a scientific approach to it so i think it's called the pomodoro approach where you basically time yourself so that's what i do like if, if i'm stuck with photography i just do what i call it call it the 30 minute challenge i have half an hour and i just shoot for half an hour and it could be the worst stuff in the world but it just gets your mind kind of going in that in that direction so i recommend that to anyone who's stuck in whatever writing or painting or photography just do like a little time challenge for yourself take one lens yeah. and i do that when i'm teaching yeah like when i'm teaching people I'll, I'll take them out and i'll say okay you've got this area pick one lens you got 15 minutes make a photo out of it yeah, and just gets your mind like just working. Yep. Because exactly. now you have like a focused approach to something. Yep. You don't have such like a wide net to choose from, like less is more type of thing where 15 minutes, one lens, go. And you just mm -hmm. like it just it just becomes simpler for you. And you, and I think I think it's easier for people to focus on on something when they're stuck in a rut and they don't know exactly which way to turn. But it's a great it's, it's amazing great. what you can come up with. Oh yeah. There's always a shot anywhere. Any time, mm -hmm. any lens. There's always something. You just gotta, you just gotta look for it. Mm -hmm. But I, I recommend that uh, that the, the Pomodoro technique approach. I don't even know what the scientific name is, but I read that on Wikipedia sometime. Pretty sure it's legit. <laughs> Someone will fact check me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So for, for for me, what I started doing in the last couple of weeks, last maybe a week or two ago, is that basically i film everything i'm doing yeah um there are certain things that before i would say oh why am i bringing a camera with me for right um but since i got into that point where i wasn't feeling like creating or anything of that sort what i've done is just bring a camera with me wherever i go even if it means take one picture or film a little bit of whatever i see i may not use it but i i just film right 
Go, and yeah. just by coming home and just reviewing it either on my GoPro or on the Osmo Pocket, right? I just carry that with me and I just do a little kind of thing. Yeah. And through that, I get inspiration on, on you know, doing something different. Just gets your mind going. It just gets your mind yeah. working. And you just need to get your mind kind of like going because I think sometimes, like Evan said, we're like, we're sometimes your own worst critic. And I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make something totally amazing every time and that just doesn't happen all the time but it's a practice thing it's a process so, so kim uh have you ever been stuck in a creative rut and uh how did you get out <laughs> boom go, banger question go somewhere else go somewhere else exactly <laughs> leave it leave you leave where you <laughs> true though it's a good you know that i like i've done my neighborhood so much during COVID and the laneways and everything. So I've gone to other parts and just been inspired by the areas. So, so. Tim knows a lot about uh, the Bloomingdale area of Toronto. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So I've, I've done, par I've gone into Parkdale, Queen West. You go yeah. to uh, Little Italy sometimes, sometimes in between, Dundas West. Yeah. Um, I haven't done St. Clair yet. I gotta get around to that. Oh, yeah. Rossi. So, yeah. Good point, so, though. Good point. So, apart from photography, what 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 else do you do to uh, you know get yourself back? Mm, crochet. Okay. Okay. That's another good point. No <laughs> shame. Totally different. Hey, I wish I knew how to do it. I, I don't know how to crochet. crochet. <laughs> But that's another good point. Do something totally different from what you're yeah. typically used to doing. Yeah. Totally I do events. Totally, yeah. I do events with my son. That yeah. gets me back into the groove. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So just it's a, it's don't have fun and relax. Don't don't put pressure on yourself. It'll come, it'll come. It'll come, yeah, for sure. Sometimes you have to um un unplug yourself from the process sometimes and kind of reboot the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. so, I agree with that. Um, one thing I would uh, say is, if anybody's watching this, this can be a very slippery hole. Anybody mm -hmm. who has been depressed or or hasn't, it's an artist who hasn't done anything for seven years, eight years, started from not doing anything for one month mm -hmm. or for one week, and once you get deeper into the hole, mm -hmm. it's it gets harder to come out of it. Yep. So, um, you know, with the, the time I spent in the army, they, there's a, there was a lot of focus on um, half of the time they were always teaching us how to not kill yourself, pretty much. Right. <laughs> so it was just Crazy. all about resilience and how to, you know, come out of problems. And those problems could be something very little, something in your mind. And all this is all in your mind. So it, it has to take a conscious effort and then you have to know you are in that hole and then try to jump out of it as quickly as possible. Otherwise, one hole can lead to something else and that can lead to something else or something else. You gotta be aware, yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to be aware. I think I went a little too far on that, but yeah, I, I have to say it. It's very true. Like if you keep a, if you keep a healthy mind, healthy body, Mm -hmm. So something I'm learning with my, I have a trainer, she teaches, you treat everything, you deal with everything of yourself, your mind, your body, your creativity, your mm -hmm. mindfulness, everything. And, and it triggers things, you, you get things done, you do things, you keep going. And yep. it's, opportunities come. <laughs> so Totally. And I would totally recommend meeting like-minded people also i think it helps yeah i think it totally helps yeah. so yes that that's one of the things that have helped me a lot in the last year and a half um there are times where i feel like i don't want to do step out i don't want to do anything but paul is going to post something and get out and shoot and even if i don't reserve he's going to message me on whatsapp he says are you coming <laughs> right yep. and um just by stepping out and going out there um taking that walk and stuff, it, it always inspires and, and it keeps you to go out and, and do something. Yeah. So for the people that are in Toronto or not in Toronto, go on meetup.com and see if there's meetups 
for whatever in you're into and just join, join, join a group. That's my pitch. Great tip, great tip, great tip. Yes, <laughs> I, I, wish, I wish you guys had that uh, group here. Maybe I should start one here, but I don't. You should I don't, start, you could. start a group. Oh, you could oh, see oh, it, it's. I know it's hard, but when you start, you make find some other people in your neighborhood who are interested that can help yeah. you organize yeah. other yeah, events, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. Trust me, the the meetup groups uh, group here has helped me a lot. Like in the last couple of years. I've been to almost everyone except for a few ones that I can't. But yeah. whenever I can, I go out. And yeah. when you go out sometimes, sometimes I go there without, an, you know, really knowing what I'm doing. But you get to talk to people. You just talk. Right? Right. You get to talk to people. You get to share ideas, um, that kind of stuff. And it, it inspires you to keep going no matter what. You just don't feel like you're alone, you know? Yeah, yep. Exactly. And, you don't feel like you're alone. And recently, Brian and Andrea, they've yep. really been really helpful because we live in the same neighborhood. And yeah. there's been times where the three of us have gone out in the middle of the night just to go shoot light painting. <laughs> so, and, and it helps, right? It's, yeah. it just keeps you. We need you, to do more. Yeah, yeah it just keeps you, keeps you in that groove of creating something, you know, and learning too. Like yeah. I personally, on my own, I probably would never have shot light painting <laughs> on my own. <laughs> You need to know people that know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. True. I recommend it for the audience. Go on meetup.com or I don't know if there's a if there's like another site for that kind of stuff, but go or check it do out. what some other people do and just say, Hey, you want to okay. meet up? Wait, what? Who are you? <laughs> Well, I see. I've seen the uh, light light work light painting workshops and a few other people. You know, just want to meet up. Anybody? Just DM me. I mean, you're meeting yeah. in public, so. I mean, that's the power of social yeah. media. Really, you can just go. Yeah. On, you can go whatever Twitter or Instagram and just say, "Hey, anyone want to go shoot today?" You'll probably get someone. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. The power of social media. You got to leverage that. Leverage that kind of power. Hey, uh, Evans. Huh? Keep keep the conversation going for a second. I am uh, going to add tags on the video. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't understand. Keep How quiet. did that come about? <laughs> In the middle of the live show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I think God. I think when when I when I moved to Sacramento, that was one of the things that uh, got me because for about three months. Two to three months, I had not touched my camera or anything like that, and I was just drowning, just like that. So one of the ways that um, I got myself out of it was to go on Instagram, and then go to the search column, type in Sacramento, yep. and then <laughs> look at the uh, posts, look through the recent posts to find photographers who have posted. I just yep. looked through their work. If their work is good, I just send them a message hey i like your work it's amazing yeah. uh, i'm also a photographer i just moved in here and i got about two people who were willing to meet up with me and one of them jeffrey grant yeah. actually said oh uh if you're available on monday that was like three days from then i'm having a shoot with someone you can Boom. join in and then I joined in. That's when I shot that uh, school uniform stuff. Evans mm. has always been <laughs> disturbing me about. Yeah, that was my first shoot. And then afterwards, someone saw the pictures of that person and was like, oh, I love your images. I was like, okay, do you want to link up and then do a shoot? And then I got the second yeah. one, then the third one, before I got my clients um, coming yeah. in one by one. And so... Sometimes Great. you just have to go out of your way. I really love Facebook for one reason, yep. because of the groups there, because sure. it's focused. Mm -hmm. If you want someone in Toronto, you just go there, you search for Toronto photographers. We know a Facebook group. group in Toronto, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say, the Evan's going to drop. <laughs> <laughs> you just go in there and then you know all these people actually are there. So once you say, oh, I'm just, I just moved in yep. to the city and then um, if anybody wants to link up, I'm available. You'll definitely get one or two people. Oh, yeah. You cannot, yeah. It's a great story, man. 
I mean, you went in just saying hello and boom, you're getting clients, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's a crazy story. But that's the power of social media. You just gotta, you just gotta dive in and just see what happens. Right. And it's also mm -hmm. like a numbers game too. Sometimes you gotta contact 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. Right. So it is what it is, but yeah. I mean, I've, I've always been a percentage, like numbers guy. So I like dealing with percentages. I yeah. ask myself, well, what's the chance of me meeting up with someone? If it's 1%, then I'm going to contact 100 people. Yeah. Because yeah, exactly. then I'll get 1%. Exactly. Yep. So, exactly. It's, yeah, it's always quite like that. It's crazy. Because this whole time from March till now, it's yeah. been a whole like yeah it's a real me i know it's crazy but i used to be i used to be that guy who every day was shooting i was shooting every day yeah. morning afternoon evening i was always worked out traveling here and there and then all of a sudden in march everything just mm -hmm. goes and you have to be at one place and i'm mm -hmm. not used to also shooting you no know, things around the house and stuff yeah. like that yeah. so then you go yeah. bananas and I feel you, man. I feel you. It's tough. <laughs> no, no, no way around it. Yeah, but yeah. there's no way around it. See me here now on open shutter. Like, well, I, here, yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. definitely when you move from one place to another, it's it's always bad. I mean, yeah, everything starts all over again. And yeah, yeah, I can attest to that too. So, yeah. But you picked up quicker than I, I did. Meet, I mix joined Facebook groups. Like yeah, again. yeah, yeah. I tried to do mix, that. But mix, mix was already integrated before he moved. Yeah, that was. <laughs> See, so now, but before before he moved, he had already made all the links and connections already. Yeah, we're just smart. Yeah, <laughs> but now I need to make a different set of connections. You know, so you guys remember I was saying I didn't like doing w w weddings, right? But yeah. I, I think yeah. it will be good to do <laughs> at least 12 in a year. So next year? Uh, now, now, yes, I'll probably start from the next year. Now I need to start uh, getting into that market as well. Mm. Last week I had like yeah. three uh, inquiries to do last minute weddings in Pennsylvania. And I'm like, last it's week? like oh. when, you, when you leave a place, uh, it's not easy. That's like what, another 18 hour flight? Uh, no, it's not that far, but it's, it's a lot. I can't, I, I'm not gonna do it now. Yeah, I need people, people, people like here don't even know I do weddings at all. People ask, "Do you do weddings?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't. I don't know why so many people shy away from weddings, though. Because for me, weddings is the ultimate learning ground, especially when you 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 begin, um, you know, trying to take your photography skills professionally. Yeah. Wedding teaches you a lot because when you're doing weddings, you are a food photographer, you are a fashion photographer, you are an architecture photographer, because yeah. you, you're even a landscape photographer, right? You have to learn everything. So wedding actually forces you to learn a lot and bring all the skills together. Yeah, I think I think one reason why people try to you know shy away from weddings is because of you know the the people skill involved in it. Involved, yep. Most photographers that I know are kind of introverted in a way, mm -hmm. not being around too many people. So, you know, every time being in a crowd of people, it's, it yeah. brings up their anxieties and stuff. I, I for one, I'm, I'm almost one of them. I had to learn to be an extrovert. And yeah. that was mainly through weddings. But at some point I realized, man, that's too much on my head because then the shooting is like 40 percent and then all the other stuff is like 60 percent trying to make sure the bride is smiling when there's a fight there you want your images to be good so you try to you know calm nerves down and if makeup is not working well you have to try and say oh i know it's not working oh but don't worry it looks good it, it's it's too I much. Mean, it's too much for someone. Yeah, um, I'm I'm an introvert, kind of to a certain extent, right? Um, the people that know me, I can really go out and talk around with, yeah. but it takes me a while to get get to you know get to start integrate to out, new integrate faces. new faces. But I've been doing weddings for so long that I've gotten used to that whole process of just walking in, making small chats, making friends. 
I, I always try to do that, establish a good relationship um, right right at the at the getting ready stage. Um, get to know some of the bridesmaids, the, the groomsmen, make friends, make, you know, they're about. Once I have that established, the rest of the day becomes a breeze. Yeah. Because well, you're comfortable. Okay, so for me, see, all, all this, I'm comfortable with, okay? I'm okay with people. The part that I don't like is the it's everything before and after, right? And after. Back and mm -hmm. forth, details. People don't read the contract. And <laughs> they're like, oh, you didn't get a picture of my mother-in-law and this. I'm like, if you have a short list, you have to submit it mm -hmm. one month before. <laughs> you have, they don't read anything in the contract. They just sign it. And then after the wedding, they're asking for all these things, which you clearly stated in the contract. That was their responsibility. And well, they blame you for it. And they, if you push too much, they might actually go right to your bad review or something. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just really, really hard for me, you know, after the fact. And you're like, oh, you had some article of clothing showing. So I should edit it in all the God knows how many hundred pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Take them out. You know, it's yeah. all those things bother me so much. <laughs> I just it's, wish I wouldn't have to deal with them. You know? Yeah. Positive thinking makes positive thinking. And sometimes yeah, it's not a controlled um, environment. So yeah. So so that's that's the thing. If if you read my wedding contract, it's very detailed. I go into details on <laughs> on what is your responsibility, what is my responsibility, what you should not come back to me about. Yeah. Um, what what your guests should, you know, if if I, I put it in there, including guests who are with cell phones blocking my views and everything. I, I mentioned all of that in there. So if if you you know that I, I had advance of time, right? So if your guest prevents me from getting a shot and you come back to me, I point you back to the contract, mm. right? Uh, fortunately, I haven't had too many people come back to me on that kind of contract issues, um, but I've had a few here and there who come back and say, "Oh, but this that that." I say, "You, I gave you the contract. Did you read it?" These were the terms and conditions. This is what you are supposed to provide. So I always tell them, yeah. even if you don't have a wedding planner in the contract, I state that you need to appoint a member, either a member of the groom uh, of the wedding party or a family member or something that is going to point to me um, the key people you want photos of for that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you don't point out to me that, oh, this is my mom, this is my grandmother, this is that, right? And mm -hmm. you end up with shots, uh, uh, photos that doesn't include any of them. It's on you, not me. Right, right, right. Because I don't know your whole entire family. <laughs> yeah. But then, but uh, one one thing I want to know is, let's say, for instance, you have a wedding job on Saturday, and then you you wake up Saturday morning and you don't feel like shooting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you have a you cannot. About you, like sometimes you don't feel like it. You're like, oh, but you're getting paid, man. I but wish, I God. wish so, I wasn't shooting today. Like, well, how do you overcome that? Because you have to go to the client and you have to show some level of excitement and everything yes. to get the mood so, going. So, fortunately, um, I'm like, if I have a wedding, uh, my mind is made up that day that this is what I'm shooting this day, and I'm planning for it a week or two in advance, right? So I have that plan. In a worst case scenario, the only time I would ever say I don't want to go is maybe I'm sick or there is something critical that I can do. But that's where having a network with other photographers who do weddings and stuff is very important, right? Um, so if I'm not feeling well that day, I know another photographer who is probably available that I can give a call and says, buddy, I have this job. I'm not really well. Can you go cover for me? Mm -hmm. Right, so you need to have that kind of network available, even if you are a single person shooting by yourself. Mm -hmm. You need that network of friends, other photographers. That's why I always say that in, in this industry, it's not a competition, mm -hmm. right? If we all come together, everybody will get their own kind of job that they do and make a living. But when you build that kind of connections, when you are in need, you have people to fall back on. Right, yeah, same way those people can yeah. also trust you that if they are in need, they can call you on you. Right, mm -hmm. 
Yep. So that's 100%. that's the whole that's the whole thing. And, and that's why when mm. you when you when you're a wedding photographer, right? Don't market yourself as an individual. Market yourself as a company. Mm. Right? No, so in a situation, yeah. if you are not able to go and somebody else goes, it's still the same company. Right? And to you, the and to it, the client. Right, and you can even have them shoot associate, and then you just uh, do the editing and stuff. Editing. yourself. yeah. So you mm -hmm. yeah. have your, your mark on. They it. go, they shoot for you. You edit. Um, and like I said, I told you guys when I when I first started, I had a mentor. His name is Kofi, and there was another guy, um, Ransford. He's usually in the chats, and the three of us have worked together for quite some time, right? So when Kofi has a wedding and he can go, he will call me or he will call Ransford, right? If I have a situation, I can call Ransford, I can give Kofi a call and say, guys, are you available? Can somebody cover me? Mm -hmm. Right? And it's the same way. And we've been doing that for years. So having that kind of backbone support, you are always never going to be in, in a position to cover your clients and make them happy. Okay. So I have to step in real quick. Looks like we are slowly <laughs> going off topic. Going off topic <laughs> and ending with wedding discussion like we always do. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was just gonna say that for me, right? When I'm in a creative route, shooting a wedding actually gives me more motivation. Yeah, okay. I can I can see that. I can see that happening. Right. Um, <laughs> so, so there are times where I'm in a creative route. I don't feel like creating. And I have a wedding coming up. I go out and I shoot that wedding. I come back motivated and energized to do something new. Yeah. Um, just because for me, to... yeah, for me, that wedding, it brings out a lot of emotions, a lot of um, stuff. And there's a lot of work too, though. It's <laughs> wedding shooting is not a, a joke. It's a lot not of work, joke. but you, you have to enjoy it, right? But when I go out and I shoot a wedding, and I, I have that confidence that I'm going to deliver um, something good to a client, right? And the client is going to be happy with it. And I'm happy with the job that I've done. It, it builds some kind of confidence in me and motivates me to go ahead and create something new. Yep. Okay. Satisfaction guaranteed. Yeah. Evans. <laughs> So, yeah, DM on Instagram. He's available for weddings. <laughs> so one other thing I read just before this show started was <laughs> you have to break down whatever you are in a rut about, whatever you're in a rut about, break it down into right, right. very simple steps. Hmm. Maybe if, if you're a photographer, it could just be, okay, maybe today I'm just going to clean my lenses and, you know, arrange them, something like that. Very simple steps, which you would normally not do. Uh, just break it down to, uh, uh, as, as simple as possible. And that gets you going. It's like cl climbing stairs, you know, almost right, right. like uh, financial advisors always tell you that start paying your smaller uh, debts off first. There's mm -hmm. something that happens when you pay off a debt, no matter how small it is. Momentum. It gives you this momentum, momentum which you yeah. use to attack the next one and yeah. then the next one. But yeah. if they are all unfinished, they all look like they are all still there staring you in the face. They're all so it should be the same with uh, whatever task it is you're doing, whether you're an artist or filmmaker yeah. or photographer. Yeah. Break it down. Yeah, it's a, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. I see, I see my life. wife in the comments. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, 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 was that for me or for you? Uh, is, that, is, that, is that for me or for, for, for him? <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's for Evans. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so if you guys have yeah. any story to share, what, what crazy thing have you done to, to get out of a, a rut? Well, uh, <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> I have a lot of stories to be honest. Love it, love it. So there was a time that um, I was in not just creative rot, but in a total rot, like both uh, at work and then also with shooting. I didn't feel like shooting. I didn't feel like doing any of those things. And one of the advice I got was that uh, you have to leave your surroundings a little bit. So I had to actually leave. I had to abandon everything, pick uh, my backpack, put in some 
t-shirts and the jeans. Mm -hmm. And then I just left to one of the villages. Just a village. I, I just looked on the map and then you chose went? one. Yeah. And then uh, I booked a place for like three days. And then I spent a whole weekend at that village. Nothing really. Just walking around, looking at how people live, you know, their culture and everything. And when I came back to the city, like it gave me a quick idea. Yeah. It gave me a really quick idea. And, and that's when one of my biggest projects started. That's when I started the natural hair project. Because mm -hmm. in the village, everybody was in the natural hair and they were happy and running mm -hmm. around in simple African clothing, not too much. And I, I didn't also take like my camera along and stuff like that because I wanted to be away from all of those stuff. And seeing people like that, seeing that kind of culture, the way of life, I felt like, well, maybe it's that's something that we are missing in the city. And when I started that project, it just took off. And then I did the project for almost two years. Hmm. Wow. Great story, man. Yeah. So afterwards, like there was there was nothing like a creative rot for that whole two year period. Because every day I had something to shoot, every day I had a story to write. And it was just phenomenal. So I think one of the good things is going out of your space. So I remember last year when I went on break. That was when I was preparing myself to leave the corporate world. I went on a five month break, traveled all around the world and mm -hmm. seeing different cultures, meeting different people, created a whole different outlook. Even into my oh. photography career, I realized some of the things that I was doing is basically not what I really wanted to do. It's like always the first love. What made you start photography? Because yeah. once you start getting money, it tends to change a little bit because you know you are focusing on the money a little bit and all yeah. of that you are looking at clients demands you are not really looking at what you wanted to do yeah. so it's easy to go into active rut when you are doing stuff that other people are asking you to do it's basically mm -hmm. like employment to you mm -hmm. yeah having it's a like you project train yourself to be a medical doctor Exactly. You change yourself to be a medical doctor and then they say, oh, you just be a secretary for a while and then you move into the profession. During your whole time of being a secretary, you feel like, what am I doing here? Do I really belong here? And stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Let's say you train yourself to be a landscape photographer or cityscape photographer. Then you start shooting products, you know, shoes and stuff like that uh, or catalog uh mm -hmm. footwork alone you do that for a continuous while at the beginning it's fun because it's something new so the learning curve you know it boosts your adrenaline it gives you something different so you do it for a while and then you get used to it you start getting the money but you feel like is this skill really something i wanted to do was that my first love for photography then yep. you start feeling like I don't want to do any of this product stuff again. I don't I don't feel like shooting today. I don't, no, want, to shoot I'm not couch. I don't want to shoot another couch. Exactly. And if you don't take care, if you if you do it for a long time, if you don't take care, you might forget what your first love was. Easily. And yeah. that's the hole that Mick was talking about. You fall into that hole and you lose yourself. It's easy. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. 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 It's a great point that you that you made when you when you took the break because you weren't actively seeking to get out of the rut, you just kind of like left. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I think I think there's a point there. Because that's the issue. Before that, I used to be a wedding photographer as well, a big time one, shooting like twice a week, at least once a week. So mm -hmm. back to back to back to back, combining yeah. it with being a tax consultant and <laughs> all of that. <laughs> are, you, are, you so, are you taxes? Yeah, so like you have no time to even think about your passion. Like, am I doing stuff for passion? Because you have people paying you to deliver their pictures yeah. and you have people paying you to give them tax advice. So it's a back to back issue for you. And then one time I just sat back and I was like, nah, this is not me. This is not what I want to do. 
So I just had to give my cameras out to the people that I used to work with because I used to work with a team. As you said, wedding photography, it has to be a team. If not, everyone would be like, where is Kobe? Where is Kobe? I, I can't deal with that. So we go as catalyst photography and then we do it. So when it happened, I just helped those who wanted camera gears. I helped them. Some people branched into YouTube and stuff like that and dispersed all the people that work with me. Then I just focused on myself, took a little bit of projects here and there, maybe fashion catalog, stuff that I wanted to do. And then I just did them. The money wasn't as much as the weddings, but the peace of mind and then the creative edge to create something new. Because, you know, in commercial fashion catalog, you yeah. get the chance to sit with a client and say, okay, let's go this way with the art direction. And it helps you by in wedding, go like, no, I want something like this. I want something like this person's wedding picture. I want something like this person's <laughs> place. I want to shoot at the waterfall like this picture. And it's like, you're copying someone's image and then you can't even have the creative freedom sometimes because you want to create something to your style and they go like, no, 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 no. I want something like this. And mm. sometimes I, you feel like, what am I, I doing? Yeah. 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 And, and you know, at, at one point or the other, we are, we are being um, like our creativity dwells a lot on some of the stuff we see. It's like, because of social media, these these days we see so many things, right? I went to do a shoot the other day by these white rocks. And then when I was there, only one pose was coming in my mind. I'm like, why am I so drawn to this pose? Why is this trying? And then I, it just occurred to me that I've seen several photographers shoot at that spot and they all shot yeah. in that direction mm -hmm. with those white rocks. So somehow my brain has yes. uh, uh, formed this this notion that I don't, I'm not even aware of, but it just made me do the same thing. And when I went to check the pictures, I'm like, oh, this is the exact same thing all these other photographers in the Dallas area have done. And I wasn't even aware, but I ended up doing that <laughs> and I came home. So so social media is a whole different animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and, and exactly. sometimes... Sometimes... And that's one of the difficult parts because when you keep... When you keep doing that you you are not thinking creative you are not using your creative senses you think you are it's you more think like you are, creative. You are <laughs> no you are not using it fully yeah you are not using it fully and if you are not using it fully your brain you know the adrenaline is not that much so you mm. keep doing that and for a while you feel like well i have too much space too much energy to do something else I don't feel like creating these things anymore because I'm used to doing them. Especially when you get to the point where, let's say, I did studio for a whole year, and at some point in my studio photography, the client in a 10 minutes, we are done. And I have 10 strong images. And so you look at stuff like, you start questioning certain things. Like, is that really what I want to do? Is And it's, it's, it's crazy. I, I don't yeah. want to be in that spot anymore, to be honest. <laughs> no, studio photography can do that to you. I've owned a studio. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's very easy <laughs> to get bored in the studio. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, studio lighting is, for me, it, it, at the point it became the same, right? It's yeah. that simple I, setup. You just so I, I, repetitive. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. My lights were, you know, yeah. every light had a certain. There's, flag. there's no challenge. At, at a point, there was no challenge there for me anymore because I know if I want this, put a light here, put a light here. Yeah. yeah. Kill, kill all the ambience, fire. That's it. Right. It, it got to the point there is no creativity in there anymore. Um, but I, I like the outdoor shoes, especially outdoor lighting and stuff, because there's always a challenge. The mm -hmm. environment determines how you position your light. Um, how much, you know, you got to determine how much ambient you're letting in, balancing the two of them together. So it's a little bit more challenging and a little bit more fun. Um, the one thing that sometimes I do when I get in a creative rut, which I hope my wife is not listening, it's go out on Amazon and buy something little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I, I've, I mean, I don't spend too much, 
but sometimes you know a little small gear can give you some some sort of you know change your mood yeah right? change, yeah. yeah change change of mood <laughs> yeah in trouble <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all about the mood. It's all about the mood. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It's true. It's right. it's a tough place to be, and I think some of the things that I saw, for instance, is uh, when you get into creative rot. One of the best ways that uh, it's able to go is to do something of like a collab. Wow, collaboration yeah. like two photographers shoot a model or yeah. two photographers take five challenges and then they do it stuff like that go to the it's, dollar store and find stuff yeah brian exactly brian finds <laughs> something that something challenge. that yeah. you are not being paid dollar store challenge i like that brian i think i might do i might take you up on that the the, the dollar store thing dollars mm -hmm. the big oh. <laughs> yeah, YouTube on. a video on that We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm actually doing a video on uh, DIY dollar store um, product shooting tent. Hmm. Right. Because remember the last time, Paul, we were talking about the color checker passport. Yeah. And I said I was going to do the video on it. Please I was going to do that video, but I wanted to do a product shoot to demonstrate. Right. Yep. Yep. So it just occurred to me I should as well show the guys how I create my shooting tent. For products for small it's products, good. so bang your video. I'm waiting no, for come it. up soon. Do it. All right, Bye. guys. Uh, we'll have about five minutes less wrap up, and uh, I have a debate to watch. A debate, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says at nine o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, nine. Oh, yeah. it says at nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got a notification on here that it's 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 already live. <laughs> Uh, I think the, they're just debating, talking the, the about the show. The, the pre show's on. I'm interested in any of yeah. that. I, I want to hear the, you know, the whole shut up, man. <laughs> the vibe, <man. laughs> the whole reality show. <laughs> it's, it's a reality but show. But I, 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 I think the, the ladies, the, the ladies, uh, um, she's fearless, man. <laughs> you want to mess with her, man? <laughs> yeah. You want to mess with her? All right, so final thoughts, guys, and uh, just just imagine that you are advising uh, somebody who is new to photography or video, and they mm -hmm. just can't pick up the camera mm -hmm. again. They are in a block. So, what would you say to them? Go, Paul. Oh. I would say I would use the thirty minute the thirty minute challenge approach, and just if you're stuck with photography, take thirty minutes, take one lens. Go to like a certain part of where you live and just start shooting stuff, and it just gets you into the right frame of mind, and you just feel better. Like Evan said, it just kind of changes your mood, and uh, it just kind of gets you going. So I think that's I think I mean it works for me a lot. So that's what I would suggest as kind of like a first kind of action is to do like a thirty minute thirty minute challenge, ten minute challenge, whatever. Go go on your lunch break, take your camera, shoot. You just feel better. Trust me. Yeah, for me, um, I would say that, you know, creative rod is part of the growing process. But when you get to that point, um, don't let it pull you down and go deeper and deeper. Find a way to quickly get out of it. Um, it could just be as simple as just taking a little trip to somewhere you've, you've really never been to or yeah, um, going to a park where you've never really usually shoot at. Right? It could be somewhere right in your own neighborhood that you have not been shoot at, but do something a little different from your regular routine. Uh, get away from the paid shoots. Do something that you love to do, yeah. and that could help you get back on track easily. <laughs> totally, man. Do it for you first. Yeah, I would say just try something different that you've never tried before. Even if you don't publish it anywhere, even if you just play with it in Photoshop, yeah. just do it for yourself. Just try something that you don't normally do. So if you normally shoot portraits, go shoot some wildlife or go shoot a cityscape or just shoot some abstract architecture, just something different from what you normally do mm -hmm. just to force yourself to look at things differently. Mm -hmm. And you'll learn stuff that you can apply to your regular type of photography as well. Mm -hmm. Totally. Agreed. All right. So Is it me now? Adjusting yeah. your, your 
toys and stuff. <laughs> yeah, my kid came to play with my stuff. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, one thing that I would say is uh, go on Pinterest, uh, try the seven day photo challenge, two weeks photo challenge, 30 minutes photo challenge. There are other stuff that you can just pick up and then try them, shoot things around you. And if you think that you really don't want to take the camera, learn something new. Maybe um, animation, forex trading, shooting videos, stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't even know that was on Pinterest. <laughs> the challenge is. I didn't even know that. Now you do. Now you do. I didn't even know that. Okay. I didn't even know that. That's, in that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Right, interesting. Well, thank you very much, guys, for coming on. And uh, yeah, my final thoughts, you know, uh, just just show up. I think that's, that's all that matters. Just show up. So yeah. just show up mm -hmm. and put in very little effort, even if you want to put in. See, 30 minutes is a lot for some people. Sure. We, are, we are currently in a, um, a world of constant feed, okay? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen the, the movie on Amazon Prime, the, the feed, right? No. It's like people, our minds are such that even when we are working on anything, we are always distracted by social media buzz I don't know what, I don't know what you mean notifications stories uh, <laughs> I don't I don't even know where to start and end it's crazy, man. So we are in this constant state and sometimes when you are paying attention to all that one task never gets done so shut everything down even if it's just for 10 minutes at a time just shut everything yeah. down Turn up there are even apps that you can download. I should have had them up, but these apps can actually block any notification from your phone for 20 minutes. They will eat, your phone will literally be blocked. You cannot access your phone unless it's a call that's coming in. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that it helps your brain start to focus for longer periods of time. Yes. You'll be able to do um, it if he doesn't give you anxieties there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you guys for watching, right. and we'll see you guys next week on one of the channels up there. I don't know who's turning this, but I have no idea. Maybe Brian. Peace. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Me. <laughs> yeah.